What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another IR stream, aka I'm Ian Robinson, and I make toys for a living. Mostly my job consists of sculpting. I sculpt a lot of stuff all of the time. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Hopefully you guys are just as excited as I am. And before we get super started into everything, just real quick, want to point out the obvious ZBrush Summit is coming October 23rd through the 26th. So make sure to be there, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you guys are curious about it, ask some questions. But essentially, there's a sculpt off. It's going to be a lot of really cool uh, Pixo stuff. Yeah, actually, I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> but I know there's a sculpt off. So we're going to be doing that and register if you guys would like. So jump in there. Let's minimize that. What is happening? Hello, Sky Paradise. Good vibes. Ryan. Sophia. Hello, hello. Yo, 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 yo. Kamara. Hello. Welcome in, guys. So real quick, want to kind of talk about what we did last week. And last week, what we did was we started working on my Demon Slayer Tanjiro Nexigo statue. If you guys are not familiar with that piece, this is what we, were, so we started. And last week, I showed you that I'm going to work from a mannequin and kind of pose everything. And then I started doing a little bit of detailing. And then I hated it completely. I was like, nope, I don't like the feel of that. So I decided to, uh, just like an hour and a half ago, um, hang out with a few people in Discord and rebuild it. So this is what I did. Still the mannequin approach, so the process is still the same. So again, if you were with me last week, uh, what I did this time was I took the mannequin that I needed for Netsuko and Tanjiro, and I posed them together. So I wiped out all the little tiny details. Oh, is the mic kind of low? Okay, hold on one second. Let me... It says I'm peeking, so not quite sure. I don't want to mess it up too, too loud. How's that? But yeah, so went ahead and just started blocking out a lot of temporary shapes to get here. And now we're going to start kind of cleaning everything up a little bit. Also might be my position. Hold on. I want to put it right in the frame, but let's get it right about there. Hopefully that works out a little bit better. Oh, sorry. Just <laughs> no worries, artist. No worries. Yes. Yeah. So, I, yeah, my power... I live in an old home, so we only have like a few circuits for the entire house. <laughs> and basically, long story short, was that I was just sitting at my computer and all of a sudden everything in the house turned off. Luckily, not my computer. Um, and it didn't feel like a circuit pop, but looked and everything was off come to find out the back of the house has like these really old kind of glass fuses that go through the main uh uh power switch or or circuit breaker so that had blue eyes we had an electrician come out and luckily it was just that simple but yeah all right yeah i'm glad i got power on too because honestly everything was off and it's super hot in california right now specifically the la area it's very hot so there was like a heat wave warning. Um, yeah, so I was like trying to make plans <laughs> if I didn't have any power. All right, so now we got this, we got this piece going. Let's start cleaning up the anatomy a little bit. So again, for those of you, in fact, you know what? Let me go ahead and just load this up in the background. Let me go to texture, turn some of this on. Let's actually import a new texture so let me get the there we go this way you guys can see what i'm working on and also i can just have it here up in the corner it's always kind of nice so we'll turn up the opacity turn it down and just have a decent reference right up top turn on turn off spotlight projection because if you have spotlight projection turned on with a spotlight object there it's actually going to cause some issues now you can see what i'm working on as i do it hello frank from vegas how you doing man welcome in all right so let's start cleaning up the anatomy a little bit so it's a little bit of a backtrack but trust me it's going to look a lot better once we get what we're going for so let's 
fill this out. And essentially, that's kind of, quote, the lesson, right? Is that if you if something's not working, go ahead and redo it. Don't be afraid to abandon ship and try again. So. We are our own worst enemies, right? So. Gotta be careful with that. This time, too, we're not going to go too, too insane with the detail because we're just going to cover up a good chunk of it. Hide that head. I love the Super Saiyan as a reference. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this this uh, little Vegeta head is actually my buddy Matt's. Uh, he sculpted it. It was really cute. Then he sent it to me as a joke, and I decided as a joke to put it up in my corner. <laughs> And I love it. It's awesome. He did such a great job with it. All right, let's clean this up. Now, even though I don't know how many of you know Demon Slayer, so I'm not going to be spilling spoilers or anything, but I think it's safe to say that, you know, Nesco's demon. So he has this innate ability to shrink herself, bulk herself up, so we want to make sure that we respect that by giving her a pretty strong physique without uh, making her too insanely muscular. So, go ahead and get the pectoral muscles in. Uh, what, C uh, what GPU am I using? I am using the GeForce RTX 2080. And for ZBrush, you don't really need a super powerful G uh, GPU. You need a powerful CPU and you need a powerful RAM. So um, that would be, if you're trying to build specifically for ZBrush, I would say GPU should be the last thing, but you do want to render. So but depending on what program you use, the 2080 works out really, really well. Um, so if you can't get your hands on like a 30, 80, 90, or 70 series, then I, I would go with the 2080 personal opinion. Hey, thanks, Matt. How do you add custom things like that in the corner? So that is the cam view. And all you have to do is once you have the image the way you like it and you set the background to black, all you have to do is go up to preference, go up to cam view, and you can make a cam view or you can cycle through by hitting next all the cam views that are currently installed. So you can definitely switch it up a bit and have something like that. Oh, now it got funky. It got funky, Matt. What the heck? This is the one I had for a little bit. All right. But there it is. Now, I'm actually going to approach her chest in a little abnormal way. Um, and by the way, when you adjust your can view, just make sure you go up to preference and go up to config and store and save out your UI and store that config because, uh, uh then it'll, it'll be that way every time you load up. I'm going to do a little bit of an unorthodox way of approaching her chest. And that is, I'm going to kind of create like a full mass section instead of, you know, two breasts. We're going to have one, but the reason for that is she's covered completely. So I just need the appearance slash illusion that she has a bust because we're going to cover it up with clothing. So, but you know, depending on how you guys want to approach it, um, you can always just, you can make them full anatomy, but for here, we're not going to be changing our outfit. So we can just go ahead and get, get an illusion that there's a bust right there. Give her more muscles. <laughs> Good night. Hello, Loki 3DR. How are you doing? Oh, that is great. I'm using the 3060. Nice. And it's like the 2080. Yeah. Actually, I got the 2080 just before um, the 3000 series were launched. And I love it. I mean, I know I paid, I paid full price, but this was one of those scenarios where it didn't really matter because before the 30 or before the 3000 series was available, that 2080 was like 1400 bucks US, and I paid like 
eight fifty for it at the time. So I feel like uh I feel like I got in right at the right time. And go ahead and dynamesh that. So let's actually up the scale a little bit, the resolution, just to get a little bit cleaner. There we go. Hey, when using Z spheres, how do you change the shape sphere, like the thighs, for example? Hey, Comic Shuriken, that's actually a great question. Actually, let me load up a mannequin for you real quick. Okay, so depending on what mannequin you use, um, you want to change like the the you want oh you want to change the shape. It's a great question. I actually don't know how to go about changing the shape of the mannequin per se. Maybe if I'm misunderstanding that, but um, what what I am using is actually SK's mannequin, which is really good. I haven't built my own, so I wish I could actually like help you with that specifically. There might be an Ask ZBrush for that, um, or I could try to reach out and see um, how they're built, because I'm curious myself. Um, so I misread that question, sorry. Hey, Daisuke! Love seeing Western artists struggle with it. <laughs> That's right, buddy. And I'm going to make sure you critique it. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, sorry, I, I actually don't know how to change the shape of that. But what I can say is if you do work with mannequins, uh, you know, make sure that you actually use just you can change the scale of them by hitting E, tapping on something and actually adjusting the scale, certain aspects. Um, and that's essentially what I did. So and then once I actually got it to where I like it, then we come back here. Um, so sorry. Let's see. I did make a tutorial. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, oh, the 3060 is still cheaper. Nice. Here you guys, it caused me the screaming confusion. UI is built based on how I have everything laid out. So, it, up at the top, has to deal with just basically like character sheet. Because I, I actually post a lot of character sheets up there. Then really quick frame and mesh. Uh, I like having the depth. I'm right-handed and I don't need to make a lot of movements. So I have a lot of stuff. This is more of a thought process. Not so much a uh, a teaching tool. Let's start cleaning this up a little bit. Yeah, I couldn't afford the 2080. Yeah. Would you do a demonstration of a way of of your way how to use a new bevel tool? Absolutely. Let me finish this one quick thought and then I will definitely do that because I actually like the bevel tool and I think it's really awesome. The way to look at the bevel tool is to kind of just look at it like any other sculpting tool. It's just it, it functions in a really unique way. But you could do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So yeah, give me one second. Let me finish the most important part of this piece. Kind of block out where her thighs go. Get that nice kind of bent arc in there. And yeah. Honestly, the bevel tool, both flat and curved, they're designed with a purpose in mind. That is to get bevels very, very quickly. All right, let's go ahead and save this real quick. Okay, so the way I play with the bevel tool at the moment actually just includes, let me call image 3D. Right now, the way I play with the bevel tool actually is just very sculptural. I'm a very sculptural. I basically sculpt everything. Um, I know I, I have very little technical know-hows and approaches, unless it, I know it works and I've tried it several times. But for the most part, I, th I think of things in a very sculptural way. So something like this, for example, I'll go ahead and like dynamesh it. That was really dense for no reason. But if we hit B and then we hit like bevel arc, 
So if the way I would use this is to basically just soften an edge and it's brush dependent, but grab two corners and just start just start hitting those edge. I recommend using a bigger brush, but it really just helps clean things up a little bit. So, and you can tell there's a hard surface design, but I pretty much just use it to soften corners. So if I see like this corner here on my model that I want to sculpt or make soft, I'll go ahead and just focus on cleaning that aspect up a little bit. But for the most part, I haven't played with any real technical stuff. But here's what I do love about it. If I want to retain this edge like on a hard surface model, that's what it kind of already starts to do. It kind of helps blend in really well with two existing shapes. So if you're looking for something to have like a really unique corner like this, that's one way to go ahead and do it. So I, re I recommend playing it around that way. But I don't I don't think I actually have really done anything too uh too advanced with it. I did see Daisuke um post something that was actually really cool. Um, uh, which was basically like he beveled it and then he like inverted it. Let me see if I can replicate that, but not my original thought. But I did like it. We have something like this. And then I see here. Let me block this off. Something like that. So let's say now I want to flatten this area. Like this is pretty cool. Because you can get shapes like this really, really quickly. And I actually like that. So I've been playing around a little bit like that with some stuff. So you can combine the two and really get something unique out of it. And then of course too, you can always mask based on polygroups or change points, which I haven't done a whole lot of that either. Yeah, mask change points. So anything that you've changed is a little bit different. So it's pretty cool. I like it. But I definitely feel like it's a little bit more hard surface, and I'm not so hard surface. But I find it I find it to be cool. Yeah, it's a really awesome tool. Oh, here's how you make mannequins, Daisuke. Dude, that is awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yep, I'm still working with no symmetry on this one. Absolutely. I like the challenge. This is the overall pose, too. Let's go ahead and actually stamp that up there. That way you guys can kind of see it as I work on it. Right now, so what I explained at the beginning, for those of you who are just joining, last week we ended up uh, just kind of showing you how I was going to approach posing Netsuko, uh, which is the female character for the show. And then I started doing anatomy. And then I went to sleep, and I woke up the next day, and I did not like it. So I went ahead and I started redoing it. But this time, I posed everything together. So now it feels a little bit more uniform. And instead of going super crazy with the muscle structure, we're just getting some, bla some basic shapes in there first. Because she's going to be mostly covered. She's not in a swimsuit or anything. So we don't need to focus on anatomy that's not going to show but we do need to focus on anatomy that is going to give us the proper feel and also a pose that makes sense so lots to do but it's going to be really awesome once we get there and the reason why i'm working for a symmetry on this one is because i find it will be easier to get it all in the right place at the at one shot rather than trying to pose something and then rebuild it which is essentially what you end up doing hey ian could you talk a bit more about what you do for my life and what was your journey until now Ooh, as an artist yeah absolutely man so essentially I've been an artist now in ZBrush for about going on six years. And I first, before all this, I worked in the uh, in manufacturing. I was actually a CNC programmer and uh, 
uh, operator for aerospace for about 12 years. And then I moved into, um, then I moved from more like federal job into more private working with water fountain features. And then after that, I got laid off, which is always fun. And then moved my talents into uh, graphic design. And I became a graphic designer, learned Photoshop, all that good stuff. Um, I'd always played with that. I was always drawing. I was always kind of uh, playing around with some sort of artistic um, art artistic notion, I guess you could say. I was really just like always intrigued by art. Uh, I loved to draw when I was a kid. But I was more of like a, quote, tracer. I drew what I saw, but I couldn't create my own stuff. And so I didn't really think there was, um, I didn't think there was a future in that. You know what I mean? So I gave up art and just kind of did my own thing for a while. Eventually, um, a buddy of mine showed me ZBrush and this little program called Sculptress Pro. And Sculptress Pro was was out before ZBrush had it. I think ZBrush acquired it probably like a year or two after I started playing with that. And then I started taking anatomy classes. I started taking uh, sculpture classes. And at this point, I was just doing graphic design for the film industry, which basically means I was doing a lot of paperwork, <laughs> a lot of like making IDs, making... Uh, you know, documents for certain like medical show scenes. If they needed paper or an ID or, you know, little like filler props, I was basically the guy who helped make all that. Um, and then we wanted to get into toys. So they learned I was interested in sculpting. And then they gave me a new position, which was to be a sculptor for them. And we started making toys for the film industry. Um, I can't really talk too much about the projects I worked on there, as a lot of it's still under NDA, but I was able to start making little things that prop masters could use, because a lot of stuff that we made in the film industry has to clear legal. So you can't just like have a Coke can and put it in on camera because Coca-Cola doesn't want to support or give you the license, then that opens up a lawsuit. So a lot of our stuff is like, make this look like a Coke can, but it can't be a Coke can. So it's a little little weird, but um, essentially, uh, same thing with toys. You can't just buy a Hasbro toy and stick it in a movie without Hasbro buying off. So with all that being said, what ended up happening was uh, we started making some toys. Then the pandemic happened. <laughs> And that kind of halted a lot of stuff, got temporarily laid off, um, and I was just sitting at home. And at that time, I was invested in Shane Olson's character workshop. And I had been there for a little bit of time. So I got a hold of that course, and I just, like, owned that course. I was in there every single day, which was really awesome. And then... From there, I just started. I just started putting myself out there. Then I started streaming, and then people started noticing my streams. Came in, hung out with me, asked me questions, um, and then I had an interest in streaming for Pixel Logic. So, reached out to Pixel through one of because you can actually apply to be a streamer. So, if any of you are interested in being a streamer for Pixel, you can apply. In fact, if you're on Twitch, I know there's not there's the link is in the the about section. So I just reached out to them, and then now I'm here. Uh, then I got then I uh, was looking for work again because my film industry company um, they reached out and said, "Hey, uh, there's not a whole lot of room." Blah 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 blah. This isn't you know. Do you want to come back? I said I was looking for something more full time, but more in what I want to do for for work. So then I started applying to other places and. I'd say it's almost been four months now, but about five months ago, I uh, applied to work at Funko, and they hired me very recently to be a sculptor. Um, but in that time, I, I was freelancing, so it's kind of all over the place, which is how the story sounds—a little all over the place. But 
ultimately I just kept putting myself out there, started connecting with different YouTubers and other people in the industry. Um, and I, yeah, I just started throwing my stuff out. Got critiques, got better, got practicing. Yeah, just a lot of trial and error and hard work. Hey, what's up? What's up, Witchcat? How you doing? Do I think I'll use Claw Simulation for this project? Oh, most definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, that's essentially my life in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's good. Hopefully that made sense. But if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask but yeah i mean i got a lot of rejections as most artists do when you first start putting yourself out there there's a lot of people that do say no and if you're looking to get a job in this this field um boys are always looking for artists they're always looking for freelancers but I, I will tell you there's gonna be a lot of no's in the beginning don't let that discourage you really just focus on your craft make a good solid portfolio and don't be afraid to even ask if somebody rejects you. I had a company reject me. They said, hey, you know, just not going to work out. And I asked them, I was like, is there any pointers or tips that you think, um, you know, the reasons why I got turned down? One of them just said, you know, one of them said nothing. Another company had said, you know, hey, just have a little bit more high quality pieces. Like we could see you have potential, but just not quite what we're looking for. And so that was helpful. So don't be afraid to ask too, because you never know. You might get somebody who will just give you some feedback. All that's super helpful. But yeah, a lot of trial and error. Uh, I will do it all in ZBrush, Frost. Doing all right, how are you today? I'm doing well, which cat, yeah. Ian, how can I Dynamesh objects that are close together without creating a bridge between them? Leo, awesome. Great question. Okay, so you can do it one of two ways. Um, one of the ways is to just make sure there's not a lot of space between them, which I know sounds kind of so simple and stuff, but it, it really is like, it is a, one of the best ways to do it. But you can either go at a higher resolution, because you see how loose and sloppy this is. This is only 36,000 you are ready for higher detail and you and you dynamesh at a higher resolution that will make that gap smaller but what i personally like to do is i like to group the things that i'm not going to want to weld just yet especially if it's really close like let's say this arm was very very close to it we'll go ahead and store that spot let's mask this so let's say that this arm just for tutorial it's right here and I didn't want that arm to weld but it's right on top of each other what you could do is actually create a separate mask then go to geometry I'm sorry not a separate mask a separate polygroup by masking that selection and polygrouping it then going to dynamesh and turn on groups so when I dynamesh now whoo it's gonna break like a crazy person when I dynamesh now, it should be a separate piece like that. And you just keep groups on with dynamesh. Keep groups on, and that will make sure that every time you dynamesh, that it doesn't, it doesn't actually group together. So I can come in here even, start applying material on top, dynamesh it, and this piece is still separate. And then when you're ready to weld it together in Dynamesh or you want to Z-remesh it, you then could still use those groups or what you could do is just eventually weld it together and then Dynamesh that way. So those are all little things that you could do. Use groups to your advantage. So just make separate poly groups. I find that to be the best way. All right, let's just utilize this. Hopefully that answers your question, Leo. I'm gonna take this, move this over here. There we go. All right, start getting his anatomy built. Ideally for the stream, I wanna get the anatomy roughly blocked out and built, 
And then I want to start getting the clothing blocked out as well. That's that's me goals for the stream. It's actually pretty high resolution, so let's dial that back. Jumping in the trenches, best way to learn, absolutely. I have one monitor for 3D sculpting and animation or dual monitors. I use dual monitors because I have my reference up on another monitor. Monitor, so I also have the chat on a separate one. I usually work with dual monitors, but I use my Wacom tablet as one. So when you think it's time to merge to one poly, um, that depends on you. I would say when you're ready to Z remesh and get things cleaned up. Um, that's probably the best time to do it, but it is dependent on your process and workflow. You could take things to near final if you want, or you can, or you can just turn around and, you know, get it all cleaned up into one poly as quickly as possible. It just depends. Depends on what you would like to achieve with your workflow. For me personally, I would say I honestly... Keep it fairly loose. Um, I get a lot of stuff like anatomy blocked out. And then I I don't go to details in Dynamesh. I then go to Z Remesher at that point. So what you're seeing right now is I'm just trying to get the overall feel of the anatomy and shapes. But then I'll, I'll end up merging things together pretty early. And since my piece is not going to be video game or animation friendly it's just a, it's just a statue i can get away with a little bit more uh by welding it together sooner again it's just kind of up to you at that point that'd be the beauties block out where that deltoid is What's cool about these characters is a lot of them are, you know, um, a lot of the characters, they're just covered in clothing. So I don't have to worry too much about getting everything right. I have to focus on proportions and volume over everything else. Details is not important at this moment. But making sure that it feels and looks like an arm is what's important. So... Getting stuff like the bicep looking correct, getting the brachialis muscle looking like it folds correctly. Um, all that's really important. But what's cool is I can break off little sections like this. I can just kind of work the underside and get all that right. There you go. Working asymmetrically is going to take a lot longer, obviously, but... I feel when you're working with dynamic pieces or you have two pieces colliding with each other, it is best at that point to at least block out the pose. Even if you choose to work with symmetry on, once you block out the pose, um, you have a better idea of how it's going to be. So then you're kind of not flying by the seat of your pants uh, in, the, in the stage when you finally do start to pose. Because a lot of my early works, that's what I would do. I would just sculpt the T-pose, get the character as close as possible, then worry about the pose. And that always presented a lot more problems than, than I anticipated. So, And since you're going to pose your character in T-pose anyway, and then you're going to have to sculpt and fix it, um, you just start getting pretty used to sculpting asymmetrically. And then I think that just helps build the character up a little bit more. And I've been chatting a lot with this. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, did you keep her head from last stream? I have it blocked out, Bunny uh, Bunsworth, but that's just a temporary head. Yeah, it's right here. It's just a temporary head. I'm actually going to be sculpting her head from scratch and then placing it. So I even have the original pose here. So there are things about it I didn't like. She was too big, too bulky. You can almost see the, the difference right now between the two. And like I said, you know, again, you can start over anytime that you want. Like, 
especially in the early stage if something isn't working for me i just thought this would be a much better approach and so that's where we stuck with Your main monitor is 4K resolution or 2K? <laughs> My main monitor is 1080p. I'm not even kidding. I want to get a 4K monitor. Trust me, I do. That's in due time. I will definitely be getting there. But my tablet is... Uh, is Tablet's 2K. My, my main monitor is 1080p. But I, I think before the year is out, I'll eventually get a better, better tablet. I just want to work on the arm for a minute. What's my favorite character from Demon Slayer? Oh, my favorite character from Demon Slayer. I love Tanjiro. To be honest, not to just go on the main character vibe, but I love his story arc the most. He's such a kind-hearted individual, but he's on the verge of like... I feel like he's on the verge of becoming a broken character because it's like he's constantly hitting a wall. He's always pushing through his limits, but I feel like it can go one of two ways. I'm really excited to see what they do with it, but he's he's my ultimate favorite character. I love him so much. I feel like he's like just he just loves so much <laughs> all right uh do you recommend some reference to study anatomy absolutely i do uh think of anatomy like a language you can't learn everything overnight and even though you might see it a lot every single day, doesn't mean you'll understand it. So there's definitely um, a lot to learn. It's not as simple as, well, this is all blocked out here, so I know it now. Like the way the body moves becomes a different part of that language. So you have to kind of understand not just where everything goes, but how they interact. So it never hurts to go straight to reference because you'll be able to really um, diversify yourself and also you'll be able to understand things that you may not necessarily do if you just try to, to sculpt it without any reference. So no, I, I highly recommend, yeah, use, use reference as much as possible. Um, and there's a lot of places and resources online. If you just Google human anatomy you'd be surprised what you find but yeah especially in the beginning eventually you'll get to a point where you don't need as much reference and that's totally okay you know like you'll get there um but at some point in time i mean there's just gonna be things that you may not understand and that's all right that's what reference is for even still, like right here, I'm like trying to reshape his leg and the way it moves. And I have to keep in mind his hip joints, all that stuff. So I have to keep in mind how this leg actually interacts with his hips. So I got to know how the muscles go. Then I got to know how the muscle uh, responds as, as I position him. So mannequin is just kind of like the skeleton structure, but it's all over the place. So I got to know where his pelvis leads. What areas deform. So yeah, use reference, absolutely. After a while, you'll start being becoming more comfortable with seeing it all. And then you won't need a reference as much. Like you'll learn, like, you know, the, the back of the, the, the hamstrings, for example, respond a lot like bicep, like the bicep muscles. So you'll understand, like, oh, there's two muscles back there. There's five major muscles in the leg. And you'll learn things like the gracilis muscle, you know, and how that shapes moves. So, yeah, don't be afraid to use reference. Like a long-winded answer. 
Hola, what's up, Next Nox? How you doing, buddy? Like here, I know that the hamstrings connect in this location, then they come down this way, right? So with the hamstring muscles, if I I sculpt in the direction that the muscle fibers will go, that's super important. And then I know that they insert right here, right by the gluteus minimus and maximus, this area, which creates that kind of butterfly shape on the back. So I know they insert in this region here and underneath those muscles. So all that just helps you be connected. It also just brings the believability to to the sculpture. And when you're working with stylized work, like let's say you want to do stylistic work, but you are, you know, uh, even though you're not really into realism or, you know, let's say call it true anatomy sculpture, um, it doesn't hurt to study real anatomy because a lot of stylized work is based off of real anatomy. So you can you can learn a lot just by attempting it, even though you don't plan on being a quilt master. It's all just really helpful. Demon Slayer art is one of my favorites. Are you planning on changing anything to help it print better? This pose is on balance and next to go you should as large yeah, hair single chunks. Also printing small items like Tanjiro's sword would be difficult. Sparks, absolutely. That's a great question. I've actually have already changed quite a bit. Um, so one of the big changes that you'll notice here is, so I am keeping the weight of this object in mind. And one of the biggest thing is um, really just understanding that where she's at, yeah, it's just there's too much weight that will be distributed. So if I were to take this and just kind of understand, let's back this up for a second, actually. So we're gonna look at this pose shape here. And so we're just gonna go ahead and finish this E. So his foot's kind of down in this area, right? Something like this. And then he has a foot right about here. This is kind of how I factored in where it was gonna be. Okay, so now we have, we've kind of finished the rest of his leg, right? Well, a lot of the weight, a lot of the weight is actually right here. And she's going to be heavy as well. So when you think of balance and stuff, I always think that everything's kind of in a downward motion. So that's where all the weight's going to be. And she's kind of on the box. But there's no way of telling if the door is open or if she's actually like jumped on the box and jumping off the box. So I think the direction that I'm going to go with is if we take a look at this piece here, I've opened the box. What's in the box? So I've opened the box and I'm actually sticking her more inside of it. So then what I could do is actually weld her feet to the inside if I choose, this is still an option at this point, and I can cut her waist off and have this for 3D printing be almost one piece, and then I can key this into the back. That's one direction. The other direction is that it will be a lots of little pieces, and then I can control the weight even more. So I can still have her on top of the box here, bring her back out a little bit and have her feet planted on top of the box. But then from there, I'm going to have to make sure that she's extremely light. So I'm going to have to hollow her out, create a lot of dead space, which would save resin for sure, but should be super light. Now, a lot of these toy companies, if they're going to do exotic poses or dynamic uh, poses, they're not afraid to stick a post inside. But I want to keep this as resin base as possible so i can even weld her feet or her her uh the clothing a little bit i can weld it to this door and use this door here as a balance point 
So we have one point of contact, two point of contact, which will then help distribute the weight a little bit evenly. Maybe have her hair when it flows through. So we have her hair coming through. You can even act and have her hair kind of interact with the piece itself if we wanted to minimize how many pieces we print. Which, so I'm playing with a lot of these ideas, but essentially I do want to get it sculpted and a lot of those solutions will start presenting themselves um, or more problems will start presenting themselves the closer we get. But for right now, I think two, another direction is to scoot her a little bit more into the box and actually create a point of contact here between her rear and the box itself. Point of contact on each of her feet, which will give a little bit more balance to the piece in those areas, allowing this to still be hollow, but we can, you know, we can hollow this part out here. We can slice it right there. You know, we can lighten the load in a bunch of different ways. So it's all about balance. If you think about it too, one way to really factor in if something is going to work, you can also try to balance things with a bit of like a, like a triangle feel. So she's kind of going in this direction here. So I'd want to make sure that there's enough balance in the opposite way. So I actually could, in theory, change this a little bit and actually take the whole of them and kind of bend them forward a little bit more so they're more upright in this direction, putting her head right about here and having them really lean over. By doing that, it could create a little bit more dynamic, but also it'll create a lot of more downward balance between these two pieces here. So we, ha we have some time and some room to play with that, but it's already on the forefront of my mind. But great question. Just print bigger, one-to-one scale. <laughs> That is the solution. <laughs> uh, yeah, so many characters need progress. The two is may, uh, be, is become, maybe become the true hero. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. His, uh, his ability to be coherent. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's definitely not. Uh, that needs a little bit of work. He's always asleep on the job. All right, slim that down. I kind of made one arm a little bit bulkier than I needed it to be. Go. Oh. Grab the move brush and let's start tweaking this a little bit. There's a lesson in something, it's just Keep going until it looks good. I actually called the bicep for Miras. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I am terrible with uh, anatomy names. I know just enough to be dangerous. Yeah. I'll be the first to admit it. More importantly is knowing how the muscle operates. But yeah, if you can learn the name, do it. Because it's only going to help you just that much more, you know? Definitely recommend it. I'm trying to a little bit, get a little bit more knowledgeable in that field. Okay, I'm actually going to want to cut his feet. So we're actually going to use a new brush. The slice curve. Oh yeah. And what I'm going to do is actually come all the way across and snip the wrong way. I'm going to go just like that. There we go. And I put this temporary floor here just so I make sure that it's even. There we go. Okay. Can't hide that for now. There we go. So, new slice 
knife tool it's really awesome how many of you guys have updated and tried the new updates and such a base will help with this disturbing that distributing that weight especially a large base absolutely frank hello frank how you doing buddy Let's give opportunity to add more demons in the print. Absolutely. I definitely think I'm going to be adding uh, some skulls and stuff. I want them to be the focal point. I don't want the print to be too crowded. Um, but we're probably going to sculpt a few demon heads and put them on the floor. So that way it tells the story about what the what is happening in the print. So that way we're not overcrowding it. But I like where your head's at, because I agree. We definitely need a story to it, so. Another one would be twisting Nexco's body slightly so the weight isn't leaning too much forward, plus combining Tanjiro to lean forward. Yeah, I like that. Three. Great idea. I've been interpolating all weekend. Yeah, you have. Isn't that neat? That feature is so cool. I'll tell you, the best feature so far that I'm going to love the most is this adjust last. And I'll tell you guys why. It's really, it really has 3D printing in mind because just think about how you want to detail stuff, right? Like, you know, let's say we want to detail his back a little bit but we really want it to pop so we have an idea so you know i could just make a single line down here kind of cut down in this area and then say like yeah these areas here i need to punch those deeper right i can back up in time so when i made that first line right and then i can just control stamp that I messed it up already. Okay, yep. Yeah, control stamp it, go back, and then I can go to stroke and adjust last, and it's gonna adjust all of those. Let me do that one more time. So you come in here, cut here, cut here, they cut here, cut here, right? Back that up. Control tap that, go forward, and now go to stroke. And now I can punch all of that detail at once. So if you have something like you're at the detail phase and you're like, okay, I need to I need to make all of these cuts deeper so it prints better, like just doing that is going to save so much time. Because before I'd be like, okay, up oh, one 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 one. <laughs> be like, all right, that's deep enough. Now you do that to each line, and that 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 gets tedious, right? So being able to focus on where I want the detail, put a nice little even cut in there, and then I can adjust that. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. So for me, that's that's probably the best new feature. Uh, I haven't updated yet. want to finish my current contract first, but I'm so excited for the knife brush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Grab this arm real quick. Part here. I'm gonna grab the clay brush now, I think. Let's put back face mask on. Yeah, the new bevel is really nice. Heck yeah, it is, Dennis. Heck yeah. Go ahead and change that poly group. And then cut that off right there. There we go. Okay. How much of the body will you sculpt? It seems the piece will be 80% covered. So I'd love to 
for you to explain the process here. So the process here is I'm actually just trying to block in all the major anatomy pieces so that it looks and feels like two people standing there. But I'm not going to be spending a lot of time detailing it. But because I am working asymmetrically, I just kind of want the look and feel of it to be as close as possible to what it should be. Then we're going to start adding the clothes, hopefully in the next couple minutes. But I want the, the foundation to be right, because if it's right, then everything else will start looking correct. If you rush the foundation, what could happen is when you start adding clothes and stuff on it, even though they might be thicker pieces of armor, um, if, it, if the volume proportions and feel is incorrect, then you could be building on a bad surface and that could translate. So to prevent all that, I just kind of make sure that everything looks and feels the way it should before adding in layers and layers of stuff. That's why I'm just kind of more focused on the overall shapes of it. Not so much anything, uh, not so much the details. But there are certain things. I also know that parts of his arm are going to show with clothing that is a little bit more tight fit. So I want to make sure that that at least resembles the proper arm. All that good stuff. That section right there. I'm also not worried about the hands at the moment. I'm going to focus on the hands once I start uh, getting ready to build the weapons and get the expression of the piece. For now, we're just kind of getting the overall shapes. And I know for me, sometimes that takes a little bit more time. But I'd rather really just make sure the approach is right and then, then rush it. Here I know this part's twisting in a little bit. Yeah, nice, nice. Now what's cool too is he's not an incredibly shredded character by any means. So I don't have to worry about putting some muscle down and then destroying when I smooth. Just keep it, keep it relatively nice. I'm also looking at Proportion. So you see how this arm tapers down, but I gave this one a really thick wrist. So I need to come back in, tidy this up a little bit. Because I'm sculpting asymmetrically, I want to make sure that it reads correctly there too. That's that's important, especially since his wrist does show. If anybody's curious, a piece like this for freelance could take a few weeks to get it done at eight hours a day. So, you know, some places I freelanced with, we've had four weeks to get something done. It just depends. It just depends on the job. Okay, I think that's actually getting pretty close to what I want. I just need his rear leg to be with a calf because uh, I didn't do that yet. And let's get the shield looking kneecap built up. There we go. Coming to take a look at how sturdy something is. The other benefit, too, of sculpting asymmetrically and sculpting in pose is you really get to think about the pose. It forces you to kind of think about how the muscles are going to react with the environment and how it reacts within the pose. So, you know, if you ever lunged forward and looked at your leg, you'll notice how much of your muscles actually, like, tense up. So those are all, those are all little things to pay attention to. So sculpting asymmetrically kind of helps with a lot of that. 
really just makes you think how the how the body responds. Most people in the 3D printing community don't understand the cost of a custom model. I used to pay the five fifteen dollar per model on Slurr. <laughs> oh yeah. If I usually buy some, if I usually see something that I really like on like, you know, uh, Thingiverse or something like that, I try to t I try to tip, especially if it's an amazing piece because you just know how much time and effort went into that. Use the damn standard here. It's kind of up a bit. Okay. Get a decent foundation here. I think that's getting pretty close to what I'm wanting. Make sure nothing looks too out of the ordinary. Again, we don't want to be adding... ...stuff on top of garbage. <laughs> like, we're still in the Valley of the Suck, not gonna lie. But at least here I have some pretty decent shapes. Yeah, lat, lat, okay. Should be okay. I feel like he's a little skinny. Let's give him a little bit more of a waist. Go. Back face mask is still on. It'll be a little bit of a swoop right here because of the way the muscle comes in and connects here. So there will be a bit of a swoop. Right about here, so we can flatten that area out. There we go. Get in there. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and save it because I haven't done that in a while. We're gonna rename this. Perfect. Do I prefer to work on Tangent or Netsuko or both at the same time? Both at the same time. So ideally, I want to keep everything as uniform as possible. And if I bounce around too much, uh, I'm sorry, if I stay on one character too much and I don't bounce around, what could happen is I can build up something too far, like too much, so it's beyond. So it doesn't read well. When you're working on multiple characters and you want to have the piece look uh, coherent and um, uh, consistent between the two. If you work on one by itself, and then you go and work on the other by itself, and you never compare the two um, until you start bringing them together, what could happen is one can look really far off than the other one, even though you're the one who sculpted both. So I prefer to work on both at the same time because it really allows me to make sure that the pieces are coming together the way I want them to, that they're not too far off from each other. And if they do start getting that way where I've pushed one too far than the other, then I can actually make that adjustment. Like here, I can bounce back to her. I noticed her knees aren't done, but I took his anatomy pretty far. So I can come back in and start finalizing her pose a little bit and get her ready. You just, you just go back and forth. Keeps everything looking nice and... Uh, consistent. Working on two characters is quite the undertaking. You want to make sure that you do stuff that uh, that sets you up for success. That's one way to do it. Luckily, her feet are, both of their feet have some sort of uh, foot garment. Or, uh, not quite shoes. I'm not quite sure what the proper term would be, but they have some shoe equivalent. That's pretty good.
bulk up this leg a little bit more. Get that calf going. Do I have any bad sculpting habits that I've carried over the years? Um, I'm sure I do. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one right now. Honestly, I try to improve all my weaknesses. One of my bad sculpting habits is that I would kind of just... I would pull reference and then I wouldn't consistently check to it. So I would just kind of get lost and do my own thing. And I have the uh, a tendency to want to just not refer back to my reference. I just want to stay in the sculpting mindset you know so i'll just sit here and i'll just be adding lines adding lines and I, I had to force myself to look back but every once in a while i catch myself trying or just like i've been sculpting too long and i hadn't looked up and saw my reference and i realize i've taken things completely in a different direction than the concept because that's my job most of the time is i sculpt from concept so not not crushed cross-referencing my own reference has has been an issue for a long time that I've tried to break a lot so I, I would say that's more it that's probably one of the worst habits I've had for a while but if you're aware of them then you can change them so that's what I've been trying to do more more of but yeah Because a lot of times you have to make stuff up on your own. Like, that's the thing. When you're sculpting from a concept, which is most of the time, um, you you end up, like, having to make things up. Especially if you're doing stylized work. Like, anime is stylized work, right? And so when you're learning to sculpt the face of an anime character, there's a lot of information that doesn't exist. Because it's not there. It's just a certain straight-on look and a profile. And that's what you follow. So the way the cheekbones curve, the way the nose pinches, the way the character's mouth might move, all of that is interpretation. And But you need to adhere to a certain structure, right? So the front view and the profile view are both your structure. So you have to kind of make stuff up on the fly. And the more stylized it is, like the more simpler it is, like for example, Gravity Falls, there's a bunch of characters that are just circles and basic shapes. <clears throat> So you have to make that up. So I find that the more stylized something is, the harder it is. So that's where I kind of leaned away from checking my reference. And I would just sculpt, 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 sculpt. Um, but I've been trying to change that a lot because you still have basic shapes you have to hold them. So. I get sucked into the work. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Ian, silly question, no such thing. How do you choose something to sculpt? Recently, I found myself talk, uh, taking a long time figuring out what to do, and sometimes I just think that what I want to do out of my skills, or if it's too simple and I don't have interest doing it. Woo-wee! Leo, you are not the only one, my friends. First off, LT101 Arts, welcome in. Leo, that's a great question, and it does not have a simple answer. But I can probably, hopefully, encourage you simply. Take all the things that you love one day and make a list of everything that you love. It doesn't matter if it's a sculpting project or not. Just take all the things that inspire you and put them on a list. And then make a checklist. I have one right here of like 20 projects that I want to do and it's on my phone, right? And so what I do is when I feel stuck and I'm like, yeah, I don't really know if this is a piece I want to do or not. I go to my list of things that inspire me and I just go through those. And I, I then from there kind of just discern on what it is that I'm inspired about it. Um, so ultimately, I'll just cross-reference that, that list and then I just, I just pull from there. I just say, you know what? And sometimes... You just got to practice. So if you're really stuck on a piece and you're not quite sure if, you know, oh, I, I 
I want to sculpt a Wolverine, but I have no idea how I'm going to do that, then practice something instead. Don't just go straight to the next project to go to the next project. Take the time to practice some basics. Like, you know what you need work on. You know you might need work on <clears throat> head shapes or hands, like every artist. <laughs> so then you could take the time and just work on those things um, while you think of a project. Um, one of the things I learned from Shane Olson that I think is a great advice, and so I kind of regurgitate it, is if it makes you smile or have some emotion or feeling at all, then do that. Like this piece here, I loved it immediately. Um, I was terrified of this piece for the last six months. And it made me do it. <laughs> I sat down one day and I was like, I am going to do it. And then I basically called on all of you guys to hold me to it. Um, so I am, I am terrified of this piece. But also I'm really excited about this piece. So sometimes you you're just gonna have to sit down and do it. But if it if it brings you joy, if it brings you some sort of you know emotion or feeling that inspires you, then you know try to find that. Um, but yeah, there's no real sil there's no real easy answer, and it's not a silly question because that's a that's a question that we all struggle with. And I think the easiest solution is to Make a list, make those things, make that list personal to you, what it is you like about the things that are on that list. And then from there, when you are stuck, jump in that list or just stick to that list and say, you know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be on that list every single project. Eventually that list will continue to grow and you'll have client work and hopefully that client work makes you think about that list <laughs> because you can't do it because <laughs> you're stuck doing client work then you then you then you just like okay i'm doing this because i got five minutes let's go <laughs> but yeah it's hard because we're all there right like i think everybody in this chat room can pretty much at some point agree like it's it's not an easy not an easy thing. It happens to the best of us. Okay, let me save this because now I think I want to get start getting into the clothing a little bit because there's so much that covered. So let's start with some pretty simple blockouts. I think I want to start. I think I want to start with him. Block him out a little bit. And what I have for reference is his character sheet right here. And this is really cool. If you can, oh, when you're working with characters that are well known, if you go uh, to Google and type in that character's name and the TV show they're associated with. So I typed in Demon Slayer, Anjuro character sheet. I was really surprised that I, you, you find stuff like this all the time. So we're going to start with him. I think that would be the best way to do it. And then we'll get to her next. So, let's do it. Uh, I will, man. Really appreciate the words. Sometimes it's hard to keep up and stay motivated all the time. It really is, man. It really is. Because we're we are our own worst enemy, right? Like we sit here and we're constantly like, "This sucks. This is no good. I'm a terrible artist." Like a lot of us do that, and it's not true. It's just we feel that way because we're always trying to improve. So I get it, man. I'm I'm the same way. There's a lot of projects where I'm like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know if I want to do that. And then it gets compounded with work being so busy. And I find myself sometimes sitting at my desk thinking, all right, what do I do now? <laughs> just sculpted for eight hours straight. And now I don't want to do any of that. So um, yeah, sometimes that happens. But find, if you can find new and interesting ways to improve. Yeah. It's hard. I get it. So, we're right there with you. What's up, Duck King M? D-Rush better than Maya. Not quite sure what which program I should master. It's really, really... Okay, so... Um, oh, sorry, I also skipped a few questions. So, hold on. I'll get back to those real quick. Real quick, uh, this is Z-Rush Pixel Logic. The creators of Z-Rush, this is their stream. 
Um, ZBrush is a dedicated sculpting program and is an industry standard. So if you're interested in doing sculpting for the film industry, game industry, the VFX industry, uh, the, the any industry that deals with sculptures on a regular basis, ZBrush is by far the best program as it is the standard set upon the world. So if that's what you want to do, ZBrush is it, my friend. Um, have I done a Princess Mononoke sculpt yet? No, I have not. Do I plan on one? Yes, I do. I have a lot of anime projects. If you guys don't know and you're new here, so I work at Funko and I get to make amazing stylized sculpts every day for from kids to adults to enjoy. But Funko is not my style. It's just something I do. Uh, I can tackle semi-realistic sculpts as you saw my uh, Captain America zombie bust, which is by the way, guys, that is free for download. And if you would like to download your own, then go to my Colts 3D account. Follow me there and download a bunch of stuff. Also, the Bokoblin stuff is there. Let me show you that real quick. So if you come in here and you go to my my account, down at the bottom, Zombies, the Bokoblin statue, Darth Grogu, my Gwenum, Mortal Kombat, and Vega vs. Chun-Li. Those are all ready for you guys. So, yeah. Go there. Um... So, but I want to improve in other areas, and anime has been a, a core inspiration in my entire life since I was 10 years old and saw my very first Dragon Ball Z episode. And I'm trying to learn Japanese as well. It's going very, very slowly, but I'm trying. So, I actually want to get more into anime sculpting, and I know that's, that's going to be a very fun and challenging style to want to approach. So, yeah. Anyway, I've talked a lot. Let's start blocking out some stuff. But yeah. Hey, quick question about hard surface. Fair warning, I'm not very good at... I'm not a hard surface expert. Just FYI. But continue. Do you need to understand mechanical design engineering to be a professional hard surface artist or just imagination based on sci-fi movies? What I can tell you is there is a lot of engineering knowledge involved with hard surface um, the more you know, the more realistic something can be. So I would recommend that you you study a little bit. Doesn't mean you have to be an expert, but understand enough so that it looks like it functions would be my first guess. But maybe maybe uh, check out Paul Gabriel. He's a great hard surface sculptor. Or research a little bit more about hard surfing a hard surface approach. I think you might be very surprised on how much they actually understand i do know from some of the artists i've spoken to that the more they understand about how something works mechanically the more believable it looks even if it's just going to be a quote kids show or toy so i i would highly recommend looking at the anatomy of engineering to help improve upon your goal Is it just me or do the characters in those character sheets always seem shorter than the than the actual show? I, I yeah, they do seem shorter, and I think that's just because um there's no real scale or reference of scale. So yeah, I definitely think it is uh I, yeah, I, I agree. They do seem shorter. Alright, so I'm um walk out pants here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the good old-fashioned extract method. So I'm going to go ahead and hit extract. And if I hit extract, it's going to go ahead and showcase what that looks like. For me, one of the things I've learned really early on is if you want really clean topology or uh, really good, nice, single-sided surface to work from, take this thickness slider and take it to zero. Hit extract and then hit accept. And I get a single-sided mesh. Is dynamesh, of course, but we can go ahead and zebra mesh that. So I'm going to soften this a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and let's take the deformation and I'm going to polish by features, which will clean up some of these edges a bit. Go. Now, when you use extract method, everything is creased on the edges. So we're going to utilize that to our advantage by going keep creases, keep groups under Z remesher. I'm going to turn adapt off. I don't like how adapt works. Never get good results. And then I'm going to go with 10. 
and I'm going to go ahead and Z remesh this and we'll see what, what we get. And that's actually pretty clean. So let's go half. I'm going to do this half one more time. There we go. Something like such. Yeah. All right. Now we can start kind of inflating this a little bit. I'm actually going to go ahead and mask off this edge here. I mask off this edge here. I'm going to mask off this edge here. The reason why is we're going to kind of inflate it. Move brush and start moving some of this around. There we go. go. Now we're still blocking out, so I'm not going to sit here all day and try to get um, the wrinkles and stuff in. Right now I'm just looking for the shape and the silhouette of the piece. So we're going to keep this moving pretty well. So. Now what's really cool about this method as well is that if I go to solo, I can just cap it by hitting close holes if we'd like. And that way we can then make sure that all, since everything is creased, what we can do, go to smooth that down a little bit here. Try that one more time, close holes. And go ahead, keep groups, crease by poly groups. Let's Z remesh one more time. There we go. That will ensure a lot cleaner mesh to work with. And then I can move stuff around. Get it positioned a bit better. Also, too, if you work with models whether it be asymmetrically, symmetrically, if we cap this model off, now this now this pants is watertight. So if we build off of that surface, then what's going to happen is when we go to merge things together for 3D printing, it's actually going to merge a lot cleaner and there'll be a lot less internal errors to deal with, which, believe it or not, happens all the time. So something to keep in mind. Cap it off where you can, especially if you plan on 3D printing. Again, just getting the shapes right now. These pants are really baggy, but we're also going to sculpt on a lot of that. So, there we go. This is a great piece. Good inspiration. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. ZBrush is affordable. Absolutely. ZBrush is super affordable, guys. My printer comes tomorrow and I can't wait to print your sculpt. Ooh, honey Bunsworth. Yes, I'm super excited. Ooh, guys, okay, I cannot read that from that first part. It says, uh, in Japan, it's a saying in Japan, eyes are crowds, hands are demons. Meaning seeing things with eyes, you'll start to think how you'd avoid it. But if you start doing it straight ahead, you'd be surprised how much you can accomplish. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Since you're a fan of anime, have you thought of uh, have you thought before about creating a manga book? I have thought about that before. Um, more so, well, thought about it, but since I'm not a really good two D artist, I don't know. I don't think I would, I don't know. I, I've thought about it, but then it, like that thought has died pretty quickly. <laughs> Honestly, one of my goals would be to become better at um, the sculpting anime and actually try to, I don't know how hard this is. I'm uh, probably setting myself up for a lot of uh a lot a lot of trial and error but i would really like to be able to sculpt for 
a Japanese company eventually. But as far as creating my own manga goes, not quite sure if that's something I'd be super successful with. Oh, so I, I just don't know. Also a lot of stuff I'm like, I'm learning with this piece in particular that I don't understand a lot of things in Japanese culture. And I know anime has a lot of Japanese culture reference. So I don't know how well I would actually be able to translate that stuff. That's why I told you guys, like, this is a style that I'm trying. So I know that uh, there's probably a lot of methods and stuff that I'm getting wrong. Um, but I learn by doing. So it's kind of the approach. I have, a, I have to get a screen replacement on the printer. No! Hello from Brazil. What's up, David? How are you doing? Okay. Imagine working for Good Smile Company. That I have. And <laughs> I honestly have. And yeah, that that sounds like sounds awesome. All right. So this is that point. I got I kind of want to point this out real quick. There was a part of me that absolutely hates this block out of this piece but that's okay because we're still just blocking out everything so nothing has to look amazing right now what it has to be is just a block out that makes sense okay so we're gonna move forward we're gonna going to make sure that we tell ourselves okay self this is this is a piece that we're moving away from and we're gonna work on the next piece that we don't spend too much time worrying about the things that don't matter and focusing on the things that do matter. And one of them right now is I want to start creating the the upper part of his shirt and I want to create seams. And we can do this really simply by, you guys are going to like this, we're going to create the centerpiece of his uh, of his shirt first. Gonna sharpen that. Let's go to, and this is a very rinse and repeat method, guys. Also, too, I'm gonna come here real quick and rename this pants. And if it will help to, um, G Pro pants, help to label stuff as we go. Okay, let's rename this body. I think next week we're gonna start a. We're gonna start. Uh, sculpting the faces themselves depending on how far we get tonight the faces i'm doing last because there's a lot of expression there i want i want the overall look and feel to be good so then i can just do like a head swap all right so let's go to extract same thing we're going to extract and say accept soften the mask a little bit go ahead and polish by features get that nice and clean all right, and then we're going to go ahead and keep groups, keep creases. Let's do like 20, and let's see what that gets us. It is extremely difficult to work in Japan unless you know Japanese very well. Do you know the language? I'm actually learning the language. Yeah, so it's it's. I know it's going to be a big journey, but that is a goal of mine. I see that happening much later in my career, but but yeah. No, yeah, it's good. You have to pass the, uh, I think it's the JPL N5 test. I think that's the name of it. Don't quote me. But yeah, you need to pass a language test to even have a chance at working in this, in the, in their country. But I've seen a lot of good opportunity from companies when I was looking for work a lot, so. The goal, maybe one day. We'll see. Fun part about goals, you try your best to achieve them. Cool, best of luck then. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is the same thing I said right now, is we're going to go ahead and 
I'm going to close holes. I'm going to crease by poly, uh, crease by Paul Gabriels or polygroups. And notice a really funky error right here. I'm actually going to back that up. Let's turn on double for a second. Ooh, look how gross that is. Yes. Okay, we could do one of two things. So what this means is that when I grabbed the extract, there was a part of something on him that got masked that I didn't want to. So what we can do is simply just start over. Instead of trying to fix this 100 times, I'm going to go ahead and delete that tool, come back here. Okay. Go ahead and group that. Let's grab this piece here. Come in here and let's actually undo that. Let's show double. And if you guys want to know, double is down here under display properties. You can turn double on and off. There we go. Make sure everything else looks good. All right, now I can grab this. Let's put a different poly group on there. Yeah, there we go. Nice. I could just take this group, mask it, right? And just work with that. Sharpen that mask. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing. We can extract and then say accept. Beautiful. Okay. Take a look at that. Let's go ahead and actually close. Increase by poly groups. No, let's not do that. Let's actually smooth that feature first. There we go. Make this all one. Let's see what we got. By the way, what Tangino is wearing is Knicker Brocks. Brockers. Knicker Brockers. Thank you. Awesome. Nice guy, you're awesome. Thanks, dude. I'm actually going to copy that and I'm actually going to paste that in tab. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close holes. Priest by Paul Gabriels or polygroups, however you want to say that. However you remember that. Let's go ahead and the remesh. So if you take the time to clean up your mesh right in the beginning, you're going to set yourself up for massive success when you get to the point of, of either zebra meshing or getting a clean, sculptable surface. Definitely a way to do it. And you can also keep your resolution pretty, pretty low. I'm just going to slightly kind of pull this all out, get this built up. And we're doing this all in pose, so gonna, we get a little bit of liberty to kind of ensure that things are in place right when we need them to be. This is where I like the freedom of asymmetry sculpting or more traditional sculpting a method is you get to kind of take a look at everything in pose, every all the shapes. Let's turn off and to go for a second. There we go. Definitely feel like we get a little bit more leeway. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. So we don't have to make sure it's super perfect, just in the right place that we can then clean up later. So. Now he's wearing a belt and his shirt is tucked in, which is cool. And he has two shirts on. At least I would imagine he has two shirts on. But we can also just. Although it doesn't really, doesn't look like we really see. But we can just add sleeves on the underside when we make his, so we can make two sleeves. Yeah, that's two pieces, I think. 
Uh, let's see. What is the keystroke map program on the screen? So just look up OBS uh, keyboard overlay or keyboard input, and that's that's how I found it. It's just an OBS uh, add-on. You find it on Reddit. Hey, what's up? Find the stream. Uh, the stream gonna be interesting. Nice, man. Nice. Also, Google. Oh man, for the leg wrapping thing. Okay. Perfect. I just, I've been going through the uh, hiragana uh, alphabet, trying to memorize it as much as possible. <laughs> How did you get the Vegeta in your Axis head? It's so cool. Yeah. So the Vegeta actually is a cam view. And you can do it one of two ways. Now, I do have a video for that. If you would like to take my um, uh, link uh, my link tree and go to my YouTube channel, I have a video there. But essentially, all I did was once you get a sculpt that you like, you can go ahead and center that to your screen. And then you can go up to Preferences, Cam View, and then Make Cam View. I know I talked about it earlier in this stream. And like I said, there's a, there's a proper video on my YouTube. So if you just go here, go ahead and click, oops, wrong one. There. You go down to my YouTube. And then if you go to um, ZBrush Help, and you see an ad, and that's OK. Scroll all the way down, right down here, how to create a custom cam view. It's right here. Of course, I could just copy and paste that as well. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. In my opinion, how hard is it to sculpt in pose asymmetrically? It is difficult. <laughs> no, it's very difficult. Absolutely. Um, because you need to already have an understanding of full anatomy and function of the anatomy as well. So it is difficult. But it is not, I wouldn't rate it as like near impossible. Um, what I would rate it as is it's difficult in the sense that you have to do all the work 100%. You can't just sculpt one arm and have the other one magically sculpted. Um, and you have to understand how that pose works. So you need to know how the body rotates and move. So that's the hard part. But when you're already learning anatomy, the next step is to learn how to pose. Once you learn how to pose, you now have both of the tools that you need to sculpt asymmetrically. Or you can just start right off the bat, like traditional sculptors who don't have a choice. Um, sometimes that learning curve could be a little difficult for some, but for me, I'm a jump all in type of guy. So I just dove straight into it and um, trial by fire after understanding the anatomy a bit more. And yeah, I, I would say out of 10 being the most difficult and one being super easy, it's about a six or a seven because it's a skill set that as a character artist, you're going to learn anyway, as, as in you're going to be practicing how to fix things once you've posed them. Because in my personal opinion, you can't pose an A, a you can't pose a T pose character without breaking it. So you're going to have to fix it. Now the, that may not break, super bad but you have to you have to fix it um and so in doing so i don't know why i'm doing a deltoid we don't need to do that um in doing so you're going to already kind of pick up asymmetry sculpting anyway so starting a project first couple times might take you a while to get it but then you just get more comfortable just like anything get more comfortable with it and then and then it's a little bit more downhill from there so Hopefully that's helpful or inspiring in any way. Um, they're based in Tashio era. Tashio, is that how you say it? Taisho era, please. Military style cloth. Yeah, that makes sense. I was trying to think of the era in which. Ooh, I love this song. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but um, I was trying to think of what century. Demon Slayer takes place, and I couldn't remember it today, and I felt like a bad fan. 
<laughs> All right, we're going to do both sleeves at the same time because they don't uh they don't really touch. So I'll mask it out, but I'll probably split them. Also, see, now I'm noticing that this wrist is a little thinner than the other one. So we're going to bulk it up a bit. Get that bone coming through here like such. Ooh, that might be too much. There we go. All right. Try it one more time. Pass that section off. Go like that. Go. Let's sharpen that. Let's make sure nothing else is selected. You can go ahead and just group that if we choose to, although I don't really see a need to do that this time. There we go. Sharpen that. Go extract and accept. And let's actually rename this. And we'll call this. All right. Let's turn on double for a second. Ah, see, look at that. Grab the piece we didn't mean to grab. Let's go ahead and delete this one. I just like cleaning up the mask. I think it's way easier to just clean up the mask. There we go. All right, and that, let's do it one more time. Except double. Yeah, there we go. Nope, don't delete that piece. Perfect. Go ahead, delete hidden. My groups. Freeze them. All right. Do it. <laughs> You're really see. Oh, thank you. No, no problem. How do you replace those hands? Oh, simple enough. I'm just going to sculpt new hands, or I'm going to pull from my library of hands that I've sculpted <laughs> in the past. Well, depends on how I feel at the moment. Um, and then I will just put them in there and then merge them together. Look at that. There's a hole right there. I don't want to fix that. Go back here. Hole right here. Look at that. Let's try this again. That's... There we go. There we go. All right. Daisuke is God. Daisuke is an amazing guy. If you guys don't know Daisuke, come on. First off, what's going on? And second of all, don't. You have to follow him. Because he's amazing. There's that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do real quick. Uh, we're going to mask by feature. So for some of you who are like, wow, your UI is hurting my eyes. Sorry. But check this out. What I can do is actually, since the edges are creased, I can mask by I can mask by creased edges. Or I could just mask by border, like such. Clean that up. And then go ahead and zebra mesh again. Look at that. See? Easy enough. 
<laughs> great stream and tips so thank you but i gotta go when is your next stream so i stream here every sunday at 5 p.m pacific daylight time or standard time whichever one we're in right now so 5 p.m every time so and i stream until 8 p.m so i go for three hours typically some days i go over it depends but uh that's my schedule for the most part so every sunday you can catch me there <laughs> collection of hands makes me think of Elijah Wood's character in Sin City. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Daisuke streams. But you guys don't know that Daisuke streams. What? <sighs> guys. Guys. Where do you think I'm learning my anime in Japanese? <laughs> just go in there and I lurk in the streams and I'm like, shh, don't tell anybody. Then I just told you guys, so you know, just that. All right, so everybody, Hannibal, if this one's on, you have to click on him now, and you have to follow him. Now, here's a cool part. So the reason why I did his sleeves a little bit different, too, let's check this out. We're already getting the potential for a seam in his clothing to happen. So this part's really cool, because now... These parts are A separate, but B, we can get a seam line out of here, which makes will make the statue just a little bit more believable in the clothing because we'll have nice dedicated areas for seams. That's that's super important. So Go, there we go. That get that covered a little bit. But yeah, if you guys have sculpted a really good hand and you're working digitally, save it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to to practice your anatomy don't get me wrong but sometimes if you're working on a project and you need a pretty good hand it's okay to borrow it especially if you did it Gonna hit D on the keyboard. Get some of this uh looking a little bit, you know smooth. There we go. I just spent the last 30 minutes freaking out because I couldn't find my stylus. It was my cat's nest. <laughs> now you have to punish the cat. One more catnip for you. That's awesome. Quickly, real quick, come here. Bicep is all like crazy. Okay. Now, what we're going to do for his collar is because he has a collar that stands relatively upright what we're gonna do is actually come in here with a cylinder i'm gonna solo this real quick i'm gonna come here with a cylinder and i'm gonna plop that right there scale it and squish it and mash it boil it put it in the stew then I'm going to go ahead and actually go here and we're going to split we're going to split unmask so that that separates. I'm going to hit down so now we have this. 
And what we're going to do is actually turn off dynamic. Now, all these lines are kind of in the way. Because that's a really heavy cylinder. We don't need all that. So what you can do is you can go to edge loop and you can delete loops. That will delete all the loops that are not supporting the shape of that surface. Now what we can do is go ahead and group by normals. And can grab the edges that I don't need. Go ahead and delete hidden. Now I'm going to turn on double for this next part. So I can just kind of see here. And grab the Z modeler brush and tap. Tap this one that looks relatively center. Okay, going to mask this top part. Going to bring it down a little bit. Now I'm going to hover over this edge with the modeler and move to delete somewhere there. I'll find it. Don't mind me. There it is. We're going to delete that edge because we don't need that edge right now. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the move brush. And we're going to start kind of moving this down where we need it. I'm going to get pushed down in jacket now it's interfering with this big giant block on his head but that's just a placeholder for his head and if you guys are wondering what mannequin i used and i didn't say it earlier and i have i really 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 love this mannequin you guys are not familiar with the uh, SK brushes, then you're gonna want them. Jump on these. He also gets, he also has mannequins and base meshes for anime stuff. I'm using the mannequin because I want to try to, you know, sculpt in all my own detail. But if you need a base mesh, the brushes, jump on that. They are amazing and I use them all the time. And he streams and picks up. So, you know. Cat Thief, yep. Got some legendary loot. <laughs> She's a little dragon, absolutely. What's up? I use all spheres to make my character's full body today. That was so fun and looks very, very good. Awesome. Chris, that's so awesome. Heck yeah. That's how, for the most part, I did a lot of my... I bring that down a little bit and tilt that back. That's how I did a lot of my stuff in the early, early days. Sphere blockouts. It's the best. It's one of the best methods. Okay. Now we're gonna keep these relatively separate, but we're gonna kind of have them right there. Now let's say I want to add some thickness to this, but I don't want to actually, you know, use the Z model or brush and extrude, which. It's not a bad option. It's very easy to do that. But what we can do is we can actually grab the Z modeler brush and I'm going to hover an edge and add in a couple supporting edge loop lines on the sides right here and right about here. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit D on the keyboard, which will give me dynamic. We're going to move over to dynamic subdivision. So sub tool, geometry, I'm sorry, geometry, dynamic subdivision. And then we're going to go ahead and turn thickness on. And I'm going to offset that in a little bit. That's going to go ahead and showcase a little bit of thickness. How it should be. How's it going to be? Like this. That's how it's going to be. All right. So that can give me a little bit more, you know, cloth thickness awareness. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a way to say it. But that way now I can see where the cloth would be without actually having to, uh, you know, dedicate to that or or whatnot. So I'm going to smooth a lot of this down real fast. I don't have to commit to that uh, adjustment just yet. A good way. Down a little bit.
Grab this chest of his and push it in. Super bulky chest for no reason. He's not that ripped. He is a badass demon slayer though, so I'd imagine he's pretty shredded. But again, using this, kind of push that in a little bit. Creating a really cool natural seam between the two sub-tools, which I can utilize much later to create the final look and feel of it. Pushing in the anatomy that gets in my way. There we go. And we're well on our way in blocking out a lot of this. Now I will block out the majority of his stuff first, and then I will move to hers. I won't bounce between the two. That's a little unnecessary. All right, let's take the same cylinder, but there's also a cylinder with no edges. So it kind of looks like that. And we're going to go ahead and mask or uh, split unmasked. Split unmasked. There we go. And this will be the belt. Anjudo belt. You can see I'm not worried about details at all. Because all of that will just be... Uh, all that will just distract me from the look and feel. There we go. Belt. Boop. Bring that down. And now we get to place this right where we want it. Go. Angle that where we think it makes sense. We take the move brush. So you can take a big move brush. Start. <laughs> Buff to <Jiro. laughs> Alright. So. I could imagine him being pretty shredded. I mean, come on. Like. I, I think these guys are on full, like. Cardio regiments. Full circuits. <laughs> There we go. All right, let's make sure we tuck the pants under the belt. All right, that's super important. That shirt under there as well. That, a little bit more there. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and save it. I feel like I haven't done that in a while. And let's get some water. But little thanks. Yeah. All my little thoughts and ideas fall out in this. Okay. Now let's... This part's going to be fun. So let's take a look at his at his character design for a second. And let's break this up into a few different shapes that simplify all this. Because I'll be honest, I looked at this a few times and panicked. But if we take a look at this, let's use pink. We can see that we pretty much have a cylinder right here. Second cylinder right here. Followed by a third cylinder right here. And these are basically little tags. So these can be little cubes that we squish down to rectangles. And then we have little we have little buttons. So that's gonna be my overall approach to that. So we're not complicating it too much. We're just gonna go ahead and grab that cylinder this right i'm gonna go ahead and split on mass come on down turn off dynamic i'm gonna go ahead and rotate this or you know what we can do even better you know what i'm gonna delete that let's actually just go ahead and come here to his legs let's insert 
a basic cylinder 3D is there. I'm going to fill this out for a second. Delete loops. I'm going to shrink that down. And we're going to go ahead and just taper this area. A little bit like such. Now we are looking at essentially the back of it. So we can do one of two things. We can either make it a solid piece or we can make it two individual that we merge later. I think it might be wise to make them separate. So we can go ahead and take a QQ. Right. And we're going to go ahead and just squeeze that down. Scale that up. We'll keep it like such. Little tag right here. Something like that. Go. <clears throat> Not too crazy difficult. And we're going to go ahead and take this guy. I'm going to use a Z modeler brush. Again. I'm going to go ahead and add some supporting loops that when I hit dynamic, it's actually going to support all that. Flip over the exact same thing here. 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 Now we can bring that in a little bit. Yep. Something just like this. Pretty simple. Now what we can do is let's actually I'm just gonna copy this, bring this over here. I'm gonna paste real quick. And get that one. This one. I'm just gonna make this a brush. I'm supporting loops on the bottom and on the top. Putting a small little sphere here so when I hit dynamic, it actually controls those inner loops pretty well. There we go. So we could just deal with this. Oh, button as well. Let's take the cylinder like such. Go ahead and put this more in the middle. Let's go ahead and hit auto group. I'm going to grab this guy. Add a support loop here and here. There we go. Just like that. I'm actually going to delete this edge to create a more natural bevel on this button. So it's a little bit more round. There we go. That should be perfect. Now we're going to go ahead, hit B, create insert multi mesh or create. Insert mesh, not multi mesh. Say new. Beautiful. Now we have that right there. Now, if we want, what we can also do is make sure that we center this home and then hit mirror and weld so that it's perfectly even. And then we can actually rename this. Oh, uh, legs. And then we can go ahead and do that one more time. New. Perfect. Now, if we come back to his character, which is over here, turn everything else on, delete this one right here, like such. Come here. Now we can draw out an individual one and place it where we need it to be. <laughs> Tagline! Yeah. So you're a part of the Demon Slayer Corpse, right? I love that show. Okay. Now, this leg is completely skinny. Alright, but we're going to go ahead and just drag this out. By hitting control. I bring this in a little bit. Up, uh, kind of get the right shape. We can scale it down a bit. Oops. Oops. Go. Oh, it's because I'm on a plane back here. Turn that plane off.
Let's see, uh, to create what you're creating now, couldn't I just use a cylinder primitive, delete the inner polys, and create a band around the leg, floss in, mask where it fell, then repeat the other side? You could, possibly. Um, I'm, since I'm working asymmetrically, that might be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, Yeah, you could probably give that a shot. Because because I'm working asymmetrically, I can't just mirror it 100%. But at the same time, uh, doesn't mean I'm not. I can mirror this and then place it where I'm ready. This is just kind of the the method I chose to go with. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto groups. And I'm going to select what I, this part right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mask that off, invert that, and then split unmasked. So what I could do from this part, now that I have that pretty much where I want it, I can mirror and weld it to the other side. It's not, mirror and weld doesn't just work from uh, left screen, left to right. It does work from right to left. As long as you're over the center line, you should be fine. But I'm going to go ahead and split hidden on that. Then recenter this. And then I'm just going to reposition that as I need it. There might be some scale adjustment and stuff I'll choose to do as well. But for right now, just block them out. I'm just more comfortable in this position, if that makes sense. But yeah, so you might be able to elongate some of this too. I'm going to pay attention to how much I elongate it. I'm going to go 0.04 additional. Do that to the other side. Try to keep it as even as possible. And let's go over here. Let's close that. I'm going to need to fix the leg anatomy in a second, but this will do fairly well. Use a clay brush and actually build this area up a bit. A lot of asymmetrically asymmetrical sculpting is going to be placing it there, adjusting its scale, its size, its proportion. Even if you're sculpting symmetrically, Every piece you put down, you should be considering how does that piece or does that subtool or elements I've added benefit or take away from the piece? And how do I blend them together so they feel seamless? That's always going to be a question you should ask yourself. And you're always going to be doing little adjustments in that process, so... Starting to get the feel of it. Hey, Talton, how you doing? I literally just thought about that in my mind. I was going to see if it worked. <laughs> Yay! Yep, I like anime too, man. Welcome in, welcome in. We're still very much in the Valley of the Suck. And very much so in the blockout phase. But, yeah. It's already, in my opinion, it's already proving to be pretty... Pretty... Now, this is going to be to be a little bit lower, looking at the reference. Yeah. Again, we'll need to adjust some of these as well. But I think this is already... Blockout's already coming along the way I like it to be. Best part about baggy pants? Cover up those nasty legs. Those little bird legs of his. <laughs> there we go. Now what we're going to do is actually bulk up his feet a little bit. So let's go B-I-N for some inflate. And, you know, get that ankle happening a little bit more. And 
around. Let's get that angled over just a bit. Okay. Yeah, that's slow and steady, but we're getting there. Alden's in the house. What is happening? Hello, Lewis. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I like that can view DBC head icon. Yep, I do too. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite sculpts I've done. I have to... One of my first big elaborate pieces I tried was Goku versus Jiren. Awful, guys. Awful. I might still have that sculpt, but it was awful. I think I should try to redo a Goku. I feel like... I feel like sculpting Goku is kind of like every Marvel artist who ever sculpted a Wolverine or a Spider-Man. You know, like, most common characters. So, they're like, I feel like I gotta, like, do a Goku. A little bit more iconic. I also have, like, three different versions of that, that I should, like, maybe readjust one of the poses to another Vegeta. Alright. Alright, looking at this piece, I think now what we can do is focus on the top jacket portion. Gonna be okay. That's gonna be a good one. All right, let's turn this box off so we can get everything as we need it. All right, this is gonna be the piece. This is gonna be the piece that kind of fits everything together. All right, it's gonna make him him besides his head. So let's go ahead. Let's grab this. Now we already have sleeves that I can work on, so I don't need to rebuild sleeves. But I feel like I definitely need to. Get his, that top portion right. I'm going to go ahead and isolate this part here. I'm going to give him like a vest. This will be my approach. Give him like a vest. Okay. Then let's actually take the mask pin. Let's mask section right here. That is proper. Nice. Guys, okay, I don't know if you're still here, buddy, but if you are, what is the name of this, like, checkered jacket he's wearing? Dude, really has a long thighs. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> What's funny is I actually scaled the mannequin to his character size and then just moved his mannequin. So it's actually... But if it... that's the beauty part about doing statue work is that a lot of times you're going to have to like go back and fix some things. So if we get the block out going and we keep it loose and then there are things we don't like about it, that's where we get to change it. So we're going to start with this, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and do the same extract method. So let's go ahead and hit extract. Let's go ahead and hit yeah and accept it. Okay. Now we have this, this bit. I'm going to soften this a bit. And let's go polish my features. Turn double on. Now, if I remember right, based on the character reference, this goes over everything else that he has. So we really get to have some fun now. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to Z remesh it right away. I'm actually going to grab the move brush. I'm going to mask off this top part right here. Soften that mask both ways by tap, control tapping, control tap on the outside, control tap. Quick way to do it. I'm going to move my gizmo and I'm going to stretch this. Kind of blow this up a little bit. Then I'm going to take the uh, snake hook brush. Turn off color. 
Now I'm going to start moving this where I think it should be. And then we can use some uh, cloth simulation to get a little bit more proper flow with it. But I'm not worried at all about the uh, topology. I don't care about it. Not a thing that's crossed my mind. What's crossed my mind is how it works with the, the body itself. So I'm pulling in that direction. And if you understand how cloth works um, and movement works, then you can get a better a better sense of how this should be. I'm gonna lift this up a bit. Cloth also helps show motion. Also, how big is it? Let me look at my reference real quick. So looking at the reference, looks like the length would go down to his knee, just just above his kneecap. The name of his clothing is a uh, ha Haori. It's the jacket worn over a kimono. Oh, awesome! Thanks, dude. Thank you so much, man. Now here's what we can do. This is going to be a lot of fun. I want a little bit more motion in this. So I'm going to Z remesh it. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually use some cloth dynamic to lift it upside down a bit. <clears throat> and I think that will be a really cool kind of flowy approach. So take this the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, crease and turn on groups. Adapts. and let's go 20 see what we get there we go all right let's go ahead and maybe zero mesh at like a 10. Do half. Go. Yeah, nice low resolution. Perfect. I take the move brush and just kind of reprep that a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these sleeves. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate them. So actually, we're going to rename this. Uh, let's see what we got all. Midsection. Midsection. I can spell. OK. Then I'm going to rename the first sleeves. Second one, I'm gonna move that up. I'm gonna rename that. Ow. All right. Now the fun part here. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna mask this section off right there. Pass this section up. Left. Yeah, let's go ahead and split hidden. You guys are seeing a lot of thoughts. It's <laughs> up a little bit. Blow this up and then I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Is 
but as you can see I do a lot of just kind of brute forcing it a little bit but I already have some shapes that I'm pretty happy with I can just redesign those Also really low mesh. Let's actually go really low. Let's lever mesh this quite a bit. There we go. That'll be way easier to work with. Do select this one. Let's go ahead and delete. We don't need for right now. Like this guy right here. Scale that up. That down. that second sleeve showing not worried about wrinkles at the moment I'm just worried about making it look correct and once I get this one I'll actually duplicate it and just reshape it a related question how long have you been using ZBrush before doing Shane's course and how much did it help compare to just independent pixelogic learning before? Ooh, that is a great question. I love it. Um, so I was actually using Shane's course for a little over three years. I'm sorry. I was using ZBrush a little over three years before I joined Shane's course. Um, Shane's course helped me out a lot actually because when i joined this course i was just very much an independent learner i took a couple like very simple classes that were offered um through local college and stuff but i really just had no idea of what was going on in the industry and no offense to anybody who's taken any type of college courses whatsoever but the schools that i was checking out didn't really seem to know what they were doing or teaching to get into the industry. It seemed like everybody had experience, but when industry questions came up of like, how do I get into it? They didn't really seem to have some good advice on how to even start. So um, I joined Shane's course probably, like I said, uh, um, yeah, I was about a little over three years in the sculpting. And one of the things that I appreciated the most about it was Shane was able to, you know, not only like take a look at my work, but give that, that critical feedback. Then when I told him what I was trying to achieve, he was like, oh, okay, great. Here's everything you need to do. Um, and that is the most, like that paid for itself. Being able to be set on a path for, for, you know, the best possible chance of success um, was amazing. So, and that that's not, you know, I mean, aside from this simple, obvious, like, oh, hard work and always practicing. Yeah, no, Shane was able to give me direction. And that is something that I think a lot of, a lot of artists struggle to find. Because I know I, I, I had a hard time uh, trying to even get close to that. So, Hopefully that makes sense, but uh, yeah, no, exponentially, it, it helped so much. And the worst, these ZBrush mannequins help a lot. I have difficulty with hands. I'm here waiting for the solution. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to be going over hands this week, but you know what I can tell you? Here you go. You're you're going to love this, uh, and I will do it. I will do it here in a minute. But I'll go more over sculpting hands from scratch next week. But you're going to like this because the mannequins are so helpful. You're going to love this next part. I guarantee it. Go ahead and grab that. Pass that off. 
you can see I, I reuse a lot of the same topology to get the shapes that I need. There's no need to redo it a bunch of times. I have a duplicate there. No, I do not. Okay, great. All right. You want to do hands, and you're struggling a little bit with getting hands correct in the block out, but you are used to mannequins. Go up to Project, Mannequins, and there is a hand right here. Then you can position that hand however you want it. And so, in fact, you know what? I already saved it. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Actually, hold on. Let me make sure. Let me let me make sure. Save one more time. When in doubt, save it. Okay. Saved it again. Just imagine. So go ahead and double check on this project and say, yep, it's all good. All right. Here you go. So this is how a, a way you can handle hands. Okay. You already have the skeletal structure here. And if you're familiar with how posing works, so if you hit A on the keyboard when dealing with mannequins, you get a skin. So what you can do is just hit W and the move things E to scale, of course, R to rotate, right? So what we can do here is we can just kind of get a simple pose that we need. Grab this. Right, let's grab this, let's grab this. We kind of understand how hands work. That's always the key part, right? We take this here and rotate this down. So you can focus on just getting a pretty cool pose. Up there. Go. Okay, let's say we just want this. Oh, it went the long way for this. Okay. Let's say we're happy with this basic hand that's open. Rotate that. There we go. Let's say we're happy with that. The same process. You could take this mannequin, go ahead, go to adaptive skin, go a lower resolution, preview, and accept it. Now you can just start working on building this hand up. Right. Put in, you know, put in the hand meat where it needs to be. Put in the knuckles, all that good stuff. Smooth that down. Breathe Dynamesh. So this is one way that you can focus on getting hands. If you need hands right away, this is a way where you can start kind of focusing and building that up. Carve in the essential shapes. Apply the knuckles. So yeah, just look at your own hand for reference. But next week I'll be building a hand from scratch. So I can show you a little bit more of how I handle that. The other thing you want to do, if you would like to work uh, with the mannequins, what you can do, let's go ahead and load... Let's bring this tool up. I can kind of give you a rough idea of how you can get a sense of everything. So let's say I want this kind of hand here. So I want to make, I know that he's going to have two fists, right? So what we can do is actually, I can control shift D, duplicate this because I've worked with a mannequin. And then we're going to go ahead and just take this section here. I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest and close holes. Now I'm going to mask off his wrist. I'm going to inflate this. I'm going to take the knife curve. New knife curve brush. And I'm going to cut. A bit of a shape there. Move that down. Trying to mesh that again. Making a fist in your hand. You can kind of see where everything needs to be. the inside here so I'm going to create a spot where his fingers would be 
maybe a bit of trim dynamic to just flatten that to get the palms going. I'm gonna take the damn standard. Actually, let's take the move brush first. I give it a little bit of length. The hands are kind of uh, when they're in a fist. Think of them more as like a box, not a not a sphere. Up the resolution a little bit, and then let's just mark out where the fingers would go. Right, so. You have four fingers and three spaces for the fingers. Get something like that going in there. Play build up. Very ugly hands, but you can start getting the sense of what I'm doing. This part's really fun right here. Just gonna come down, and then you're gonna create like a little, like a little J shape, right? Oop. Just like that. That J shape, the bend of the fingers. Do the same thing up here. The fingers dig in a little bit into the palm. So again, you create that little shape right there. Because then you'll have the knuckle, the knuckle, and then the finger itself. Great little harsh edge right here. Notice I'm just not worried about so much of the proportions. I'm just worried about the shape at the moment. We can fix the proportions later. And some of this comes with time and reference. A little bit of experience, but you just... Block these shapes out as best as you can. And then the thumb, right? The thumb itself, it's this piece of meat that then kind of moves over a little bit, right? So depending on where the character is, so he's standing like this, right? And he's going to be holding a sword. So what we're going to do is take clay buildup. And we're going to go ahead and... Build up this section right here. Kind of mesh that. Now what I like to do, I like to take the move brush. Ask off this area first. Let's do that. Okay. And you could just kind of pull this, this up a bit. Just tugging and pulling. Get that thumb over those knuckles. Push that clay up. Get the silhouette locked in. Make it so that it looks like a fist. Build that up. Thumb goes across there. Comes here a little bit. Worry about the details later. Go ahead and get those plane changes locked in. Kind of mesh that smooth a bit. It's all about then reinforcing those shapes. This is just one method. You can start with an open hand in spheres, and then you can move up from there. It's just how I choose to do fists really quickly. I find them to be the easiest to do that. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. The best reference you have for hands is your own hand. Although, okay, I'm going to tell you guys. I have this, like, stubby little thumb. I call it the Megan Fox thumb because she has them, too. In fact, <laughs> I have this little stubby thumb. So, my own thumbs were not great reference for ideal hands. But, you know, you, you got what you're given. <laughs> so, start with what you have in front of you. It's always like a great way to just isolate and get the things that you need. But, you know, 
and from there you can kind of understand you know the things about you that might be a little bit different and unique you just you just own those but your own hands gonna be your best reference All right so not too bad fairly quick we can kind of tell it's a hand this right here is bulbous where the back of your hand is very flat so again with that knife brush go ahead and trim the back of that hand clean that up redynamesh it okay now what I can do is I can place this where we need it to be. So we can go ahead and kind of overlay it where we think it should be. Now he's holding a sword and he's holding a sword. Now I'm not a swordsman, but I've wielded a few in my martial art days. The rear hand of most swords are open and relaxed a little bit. You can help kind of guide it. So depending on how I want to place his hand, in this shot, they're both pretty gripped. And so we want to kind of hold true to like a good sword technique to play off that he's an expert. So I want to research some really good uh, hand positions on a blade. But for right now, we're, we've noted that it looks like his rear hand more kind of tilted forward a bit okay so we're gonna lead off of this main one here and his wrist is probably tilted a little bit more like that so we're actually gonna go ahead and here and probably tilt his wrist down okay Then we're going to go ahead and control shift D, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And it looks like I'm going to now mirror and weld that. Let's back that up for a second. Need to mirror and weld this now. Real quick, mirror and weld. There we go. I need to keep hitting the wrong button. There we go. Looks like kind of holding it or like such. Now, when we go to position the hands for realsies, we'll put like a cylinder in there. So that it's going to line up the way we want it to. But for right now. So take this one. Rotate that. Get it as close as possible. Take okay. this now. Got that knife brush gold. Look at that. Just cut that section. All right. We can work with this for now. This isn't accurate to the concept, but it's close enough. And it's it it tells us what we need to know. We'll we'll finesse that more later. Go ahead and save this. We're going to save it as a different sub tool. How much time we got? We got like 20 minutes, so. There we go. The box. Okay, so now with the box, we need to put his actual straps 
to the so if we zoom in real quick he has straps that obviously will hold the box it won't make sense if we don't have said strap so we're going to create those next but first let's come down let's push this down here to be interacting You can see really just focused on getting the block out looking the best. And just take your time. Try not to rush the decisions too much. You know, big projects like this can take a while. So you want to make sure that you really just focus on getting all the shapes you want. Reading the way you want it to read. And for right now, too, what we can do is we can interpolate some buttons. Let's go clothing. And let's go, yeah, let's go right here. I want to put a button there. Now this might be a little bit overkill. Here, go up the stroke. All right. Probably you don't really need to do this, but go to interpolate, go to stroke, interpolate. Add some buttons there. That's a lot of buttons. But what we can do, go ahead and other groups. Let's take this one out the way. Let's do every, I don't know, here. That's a lot of buttons. I don't want to do it that way. It only looks like he has four. And let's split hidden. There we go. Get some buttons in there. Uh, let's see here. What's the name of the software you use to draw over the screen? Yeah, uh, Justin has it right. It is Epic Pen. You can just Google Epic Pen. And it's really, really helpful to be able to just... When you turn it on, the whole screen becomes a nice little sketching pad. Right? Then you can delete that scene. You can also hide your screen if you want to freak everybody out. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can also screen grab all that good stuff if you'd like. Um, there's a pro version that's not necessary unless you use it all the time. So you don't have to pay for anything. It's mostly free. But yeah, it helps me so that when I want to correct stuff or see shapes, you know, then I can sketch on top. And also, too, you have a color picker so you can pick different colors really really nice so it just helps especially with critiquing your own work or critiquing other people's work if they ask you to you know you can then when you're done you can just delete it and then when you hit the eye it res it uh disengages so and it works for every program which is really nice so because it's its own thing it doesn't matter what you're doing what program you're in you can draw over it anytime yep yeah it's really cool okay uh, what I like to do is put a lot of temporary shapes when I'm blocking stuff out. I think it's a really great way to kind of help uh, you visualize your piece the way you want it to. Let me go ahead and this and split hidden on down. And we're going to call this call this the quote renamed and Sword. I mean, the sword itself might be its own personal screen. But what we're going to do is actually put this here, scale it down.
Now he has a lightsaber. <laughs> Just mixing genres. But what this will do is allow me to see the piece in its entirety. So I can, I can finish blocking out anything else with him. And then I can move to her and still have just some basic stuff going on. Do you want to know what he looked like with a lightsaber? That's going to be pretty much. There we go. Okay, now we can focus on getting some straps on there. And the way I'm going to do the straps is really simple. I'm just going to go ahead and take cylinders. I position it as I need it. Scale it up. Okay. Gonna go ahead and split unmasked. There we go. Rename this, call this uh, box wraps. When you have this many pieces, it's very important, in my opinion, to rename all your stuff. You really want to do that. It's just gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Scale this down. This is where the fun begins. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, get this on the other side. Now what we can do is actually take the move brush, so B, M, V, and start kind of just positioning each strap so it fits the character really, really well. Might modify this box a little bit, so I'm not going to commit strap being. Yeah, let's do that. So this is where I thought might be a bit of an issue. This is where some stuff might change. I'm going to pivot this. Um, unmask everything. I'm going to grab all the things that I need to grab. I'm going to pivot her. This. Make this a little bit more. This is why you keep it loose. Because then you can really just kind of just everything that you need when you need it. <laughs> yeah, probably animate that to an extent if you scale from the bottom, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Go here, grab this right there. Gotta have those sound effects. <laughs> All right. Your Schwartz is big as mine. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> I love streaming with you guys. Keep the fun coming. All right. All right, all right. Go ahead and get that going. So we'll leave these full cylinders for now. It will help us kind of sort out any um, issues we might end up having with 3D print. We'll keep them full cylinders until we're satisfied that we've merged everything correctly. Then we'll kind of hide that they're full cylinders. Let's turn that back on. We're actually going to angle that down there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay. 
Yeah, that's that's really angled now, isn't it? Okay, we may have to we may have to adjust some things. So let's save this. Let's go to trans uh, T pose mesh, which usually is up here. Z plugin, transpose master. Let's try something real quick before we get too ahead of ourselves. Okay, I grab all the things that need moving. I'm mask this and I'm going to I'm gonna try a couple things here. We're running into a balance issue. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and touch belly. And I move this here. We're gonna try to bend him at the waist. Yeah, so now she's upright more. Okay, feeling a little bit more confident with that. Am I sculpting this to paint after 3D printing? I am sculpting this. Yes, it will be 3D printed. Um, and yes, I'm going to attempt to paint it myself too. Yep. All right. Okay, so now what I'm looking at here... I'm really trying to get like the flow of the piece and the balance. And this doesn't feel so. This doesn't feel too bad. A lot of the weight's going to be right here. And right through here. A lot of this weight right here. We we kind of draw between the character's movements. Should assume that right about here be the center of gravity of the piece. This is at least greater than a 45 degree angle. Maybe like 70-65%. Or 65 angle from straight off. That might work. That might work. Okay. But we can do something with the base to, with the base itself to kind of help support it. So, yeah, let's let's work with that. You can see there's a lot of troubleshooting too. Cool. Thanks for the answer. Looking great so far. Yeah. No problem. Iron Knuckles. Yeah, this is still in the very early stages, and yeah, it's it's definitely on its way. And what have we got? Five minutes? Yeah, about five minutes. Okay. So next week, what I think we're going to start with is we'll start with um, start with getting her dressed, and then from there. Um, up a little bit. 
start with getting her dressed, and then from there, um, more than likely, we'll start uh, handling the the uh, the faces shortly after. Just so I don't fall too far behind. If I do anything off stream, I'll tell you guys. But I want to try to keep this project as much on stream as possible. So you guys can see the whole workflow. I know that can get a bit tedious and sometimes a little bit boring. But definitely think it would benefit. A lot more sag at the bottom of, her, of his pants. So, yeah, yeah there, there's a lot, there's a lot happening. <laughs> I think I'm going to want to adjust the position of the sword as well. But for right now, that, I mean, this does look really cool that way. I might keep it that way. In the concept, it's more off over this way. But here's the thing, like, in the concept, it's more like this. But, you know... We can make it our own. It's not like I'm being held to uh, a boss art director. If it works and it makes sense, like he could have just sliced across as she's lunging out. I can't imagine having somebody lunge off of me while swinging a sword. It's already epic in everything about it. Go ahead and grab this real quick, soften that, because I want to bring this part up. We want to bring this up too. Now what we will do to um, basically make sure that this sleeve prints correctly, what we will do is give it thickness, um, and then we'll actually create like a cutout section for this. So this will be a solid piece, and then It'll get uh, re uh, recessed into the sleeve to make it look like it's a full sleeve. And then we'll cap it so that it's still a solid piece and manufacturable. So that will work out pretty well. Really long wrist too. So we'll change a few proportions and stuff as well. But I think it's starting to come along pretty well. And some some minor things we need to fix. How did you balance the Chung Li sculpt? So the Chung Li sculpt. Here, I can actually bring it up real quick. Let me let me go full screen. Get full me. I have it right here. So all right. Here's the Chung Li piece. So this is about 20 pieces, and that's still not a lot considering the type of sculpture it is. But with a Chung Li piece, go ahead and take her head off for a second, or take his head off for a second. It's hard to tell, but her legs are one piece that I hollowed in ZBrush to maintain the weight. And then her body is one, two, three, four additional pieces. So total of five pieces, but her feet got welded. I don't know how you can see that, but got welded to his face. Let's see if I can. And then to cover up the mistakes I made on his face, because I did make a few, I just put strands of hair everywhere and really mashed his face in. So it's he's not even recognizable at this point. So I thought, you know what, let's just ruin his face and weld that together. But then I created a very long key connected from his neck and cut that hole right there. So it doesn't even need glue. But most importantly is, like the other stuff, I found the balance point, which was right about here. This is the balance point where most of the weight was going to be. So what I did was I created kind of like a little bit of a of a I'm sorry uh, a little bit more of like a 
I played off of angles, so I wanted this kind of like 90 degree shape happening and focus the balance on one side over the other, keeping her as light as possible and his bottom part as heavy as possible, which would then help kind of even out the weight everything. That was a little bit of trial and error, but overall, yeah. That's how I balanced it. Yeah, it took a while. This project took about four weeks to get done. So, and you can see a lot of tiny little pieces. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, that that's that's how I did that piece. So that's essentially what I'm doing here too. Now what I'm trying to do here is the same thing. You have to treat each piece as a as its own entity because it's going to have different weight. So the goal is we got to keep Netsuko as light as possible, and we need to keep the 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 center of gravity. We need to keep where all the weight's going to be distributed as heavy as possible, right? So this part needs to be heavy. It needs to be heavier than that light piece. So if we can, so you, that's the beauty part about 3D printing is we can actually control that by hollowing her out in ZBrush, making sure that she is is she comes naturally light, um, you know. And then when we print, we make sure that like maybe maybe we don't hollow out his legs. We keep his legs super sturdy. Because maybe we'll, cre we'll uh, create like a little, like maybe we cut at his waist, right? And then this box is a separate piece. So this part right here is just going to be weighted really heavy. And she's going to be as light as possible. So yeah, that's, that's going to be essentially what we want to do. To keep this balanced and then of course too we're going to want to play with our strengths and our strengths are going to be whatever base we decide to create so whatever the base is here we can utilize by maybe we have like a lot of rocks right we have a ton of rocks everywhere a couple heads you know have some anime heads Woohoo! look how pretty that is ah. right but then we recede his feet into the base, like kind of cut that out with some pretty decent pegs that really stabilize him. So we, we add in features that are not seen, but support the overall balance. And yes, uh, for those who are asking, Epic Pen is the uh, add-on that I use. Epic pin. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for the day. So we got pretty pretty good on the blockout for for Tanjiro. We're going to work on the blockout next week for Nexico. And then we're going to start really coming together. This is, like I would said before, this project is going to take a while to get it. So I might work on it a little bit more in my personal time if I have time. But I want to keep as much of the workflow here as much as possible. So last week I showed you how I posed that's a go and then I posed Tanjiro but I didn't do anything else until I got to the stream and then we did everything from scratch. So my my goals with this project is to kind of create a series of videos here on Pixo that you can come through and see the whole entire process from start to finish on how you make a toy sculpture. Um, there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of downtime in that so if you guys have any questions you'd like to bring next week, please let me know. Um, I know this part of the process can get a little mundane, but bear with me. And yeah, we're going to, this piece is going to be awesome. I already feel it's, it's coming together. So yeah. Do I ever use magnets to fit models together? Uh, I haven't yet, Justin, but that is a goal of mine for sure. So I don't know, maybe I'll look into some magnets and actually do that with this piece. Maybe that would be maybe that would be it. So anyway, guys, all right, that is it. I appreciate every one of you for coming by, stopping in, hanging out with me. Do not forget, guys, the most important reason for, you know, hanging out. You know you want to come to the summit, so 
<laughs> definitely come check it out. Register if you want to sculpt with me. I'm going to be joining the sculpt off, as is so many other artists. But you guys, it is open to everyone to so come over there to summit.pixelogic.com. And October 23rd. And if you don't want to compete, that's okay too, because, you know, like last year, I'm sure there's going to be tons of information thrown at everybody so that, you know, we as artists can improve by a company and a program that cares, which is always awesome. So, good info. Awesome, awesome. See you next week. Yeah, guys. All right. That is it. Remember, guys, if you guys want to be better, 1% more tomorrow than you were today. That's how it works. Leaving yourself, you'll be good. And with that, I'm gonna sign off. I'll see you guys later. Bye, 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 bye.